Hi everyone and welcome to virtual week four. It's uh, crazy to believe that we are already in our fourth module in this new format, but you guys are doing a great job and I hope you're still getting some interesting things from this class in our new format. If we were meeting in person, we would be entering sort of our last unit. Um, here it's going to be two modules basically. And we can call this unit or module set um, the economic capital of bodies. So we've talked about the social capital of bodies, especially in our last set of readings with Verdery. We've talked about the symbolic capital of bodies in, in our first units. Now we're moving into the economic capital, that is the monetary value of a body or a body part. And um, there's so much to talk about with this. It's actually probably my favorite class day. <laughs> Come on, you know you miss hearing me say that every time. But really, <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. Really, it's a fascinating topic. And the PowerPoint is going to provide you with a lot of really interesting links to follow to see just what we're talking about. So your main reading for this particular um, module is an article called They Sell Skulls Online, and it's from 2016. I'm going to link at least two other news articles in the module as well. All of this is very short. The, the They Sell Skulls Online is five pages and these news articles are, you know, news articles. So it'll be a bit of a breather after what I know is a difficult read with Verdery. Um, and all of these particular um, articles are looking at the sale of skeletons. Uh, in the next module, we will look at the sale of body parts, organs, legs, things like that. But this is looking at the sale of um, just skeletal material. Because did you know, it's not illegal to sell skeletal parts in the US. There is no one law that says it's actually illegal. There are some piecemeal laws that regulate what can be sold. So there is the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, which prevents the sale of Native American remains. There are interstate commerce laws that prevent the sale of human remains across some state borders. There are antiquities acts in the US and internationally that prevent the sale of archeological materials. But if you have legally acquired skeletal remains, medical research, body donation, something like that, it's actually not illegal in this country to sell them. Shocking, right? So bodies have economic capital too, and that's really fascinating for this class and really fascinating for us to think about. What does it mean to sell a body? After we've spent all semester talking about, you know, what a body means in different cultural contexts, what it means politically, what proper burial should be, now we're gonna turn around and say, how much does it cost to buy one? So, um, the article was written, as I mentioned, in 2016, and things have changed. Companies have tried to get out ahead of the sale of, of skeletons, some, not all, in part because a lot of the population finds this ethically and morally distasteful, even if it's not illegal. Not everyone, of course, but there is a certain percentage of the population. And so I'm gonna provide you some links in the PowerPoint to places where you can still find skeletal remains for sale today on the internet. Um, I'm just working on that now. I have my links from last year and some of them have changed, so I'm gonna update. But even before you click on my links, if you dare, you know, type real human bone into Amazon and see what you get. You're gonna find stuff. There are also um, individual companies that sell human skeletal remains for legitimate research purposes to colleges, universities. I'll tell you a story in the PowerPoint about that. I'm not gonna take time in the video to do it. Um, medical schools, things like that. Um, and some of them have really tight restrictions on who can make those purchases and they say so in their instructions. You, know, you gotta prove who, who you are um, and what you're doing. Um, and so I'll give you links to some of those organizations. Some are less scrupulous and, and don't really seem to care who's making the purchase. Um, so a lot to think about there. And I'm gonna try if I can to link to an article I saw last year about Instagram, which has become one of the hotbeds for selling skulls, interestingly. So you have legitimate purposes for buying um, skeletal remains. You have companies that are fulfilling that and some that are you know, not really paying attention to it. 
And then you also have another subsection of the population that has an interest in buying remains besides just collectors or education or medical field. And that's uh, fraternal organizations. So I'm linking to a news article about the Odd Fellows and um, what's happened as old lodges close down and skeletons turn up inside them. But it's not just Odd Fellows, lots of fraternal organizations use skeletal remains as part of their ritual. And I know some of these organizations have shifted in recent times to using uh, high quality casts, which you can get, you know, any of us can buy a cast, you know, $200 for a skull, maybe $1,000 for a whole skeleton. But there are many who still use human remains and, and how those are acquired or sometimes purchased, um, sometimes grave robbed. Uh, there's a whole world out there on this topic for s these social um, organizations. So there's a lot to unpack there. I'm going to try to put all of this interesting stuff and stuff about laws and stuff about where you can buy things right in the PowerPoint. So even though the reading is short, give yourself some time to click through all the various links in the PowerPoint. I think we would have had a really fun time talking about this together in class, uh, but hopefully you can um, have a good time looking through all of this material on your own in, um, in the PowerPoint in Canvas. Okay, so that's where we are, that's where we're headed. It's a little bit of background information. I hope everybody's doing okay. I remain you know, concerned about all of us during these times. I hope you're being safe. If you're having trouble with the work, as always, please, please, please just reach out to me. I'm being as flexible as I can with folks who are in difficult situations. And um, I know there's a lot more pressing things going on than school for a lot of you. Uh, and so if I can help with that, let me know. All right, so from my porch, have a great time with this module. It should be, like I said, a little more entertaining and a little bit easier than the last one. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Bye-bye.